But the main thing I would say to you, the important thing here is, what are the choices that you make? Because our moms put good stuff in us. We might have gotten some bad stuff from our moms. But what about the choices that we make? Now that we're growing and we're like fully formed adults or moving in that direction, what are the choices that we make? And I think this is really powerful because we look at Jacob and what are the choices that Jacob made? If you think about his background, his dad, he didn't have such a great relationship with his dad and his mom, mixed bag, pluses and minuses, but Jacob made choices and they were very significant, important choices. And I think he models for us the choices that we can and should make as well. So when you think about the choices that he made, I'd like for you to flip and just watch this here with me because these choices, uh, he chose to walk with God in, the cho in, in these decisions. So when he ran away from home because Esau was going to kill him, um, Jacob had a very powerful experience, Jacob's ladder. He had a vision from God and God spoke to him and said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to protect you and take care of you until I bring you back here. And when Jacob woke up from that vision and dream, he's like, oh my goodness, God was here and I didn't even realize it. And he made choices. And then as you keep looking at Jacob, he continued to make choices as well because he chose to walk with God and he chose to walk with God both in adversity, in uncertainty, and in continuity. So when he lived with, with Laban, and Laban was a very deceptive, manipulative guy. <laughs> when, no shock there. But God prospered Jacob. God protected Jacob. God looked after Jacob. And Jacob recognized God's hand on his life. And when he left Laban and he came back to his promised land, he wrestled with God. We read about that wrestling match and, and Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And you look at the choices that Jacob makes. He makes the choice to hold on to God. He makes the choice to walk with God. And he makes the choice to be continuous and steady with God. Because after the wrestling match, God renames him and says, I'm going to call you Israel instead of Jacob. He changes his name and the change of name also goes with the change of character. Instead of being a deceiver, that's what Jacob means, Jacob becomes Israel, which we, means one who wrestles with God. And I'd rather be known as a wrestler with God <laughs> than a deceiver. But when he comes into his homeland, he sets up another altar at Bethel, the same place where he had the, the dream the first time. And he acknowledges and worships God. And then you see him consistently over the time that he's in his homeland, he worships God. And even when at the end of his life, when he's going down to Egypt, he continues to worship God. He sets up another altar and has an experience with God speaking and, and talking to him, saying, I'm leading you down here to Egypt to rescue your family. So you watch Jacob and the choices that he made. He could have gotten bitter. He could have gotten angry. He could have looked at the adversity that he was in and, and been very upset about it. But he chose, he consistently chose to follow and walk with God and be consistent and steady with God.